Lead. What do you think of B Biafra? Um, as in terms of the civil war, mm. or in terms of as a concept, a modern nah, concept, anything really. Like I think civil war, really, I think that's anything. Yeah, any way you wanna take, any way, just take, take it, take it any way you wanna take it. So, yeah. so um, first of all, I should specify that um, I am what you would call an. Mm. I'm not. I'm not a Pan Africanist. I'm what you call an African nationalist. So, and what I mean by that is. I want better lives for Africans. So however that is going to be the case mm. is fine by me. If the way for that to be the case is for the sort of artificial boundaries and borders that have been imposed on Africa to be redrawn and for Africa to become 250 countries instead of 50, 54, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, the way, if that's the way for it to happen, well, so be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, I'm not against... Mm. The basic concept of self determination. I think that's a, it's a human right. It's a universal, yeah, yeah, yeah. inalienable yeah. human right. So, the issue that I have is when, um, and I think I've, I, I wrote about this in a business day column last year. I, I, I used the comparison with the um, Revolutionary United Front, that's the roof of Sierra Leone mm. in the 90s, that where there's a grievance or there's a reason for a grievance, and then one <coughs> charismatic person. And a group of, you know, followers who later, you know, become armed and dangerous, mm. decide to act on that grievance without necessarily, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, outlining what their grievance is, how they want to fix it, and what their vision for the the new um, grievance-free world mm. that they want looks like you end up with a situation like Sierra Leone. Yeah. That's what I wrote in that column, that the grievances that led to the creation of roof were real. Mm. They were real. It's easy to think of the roof as just these like animalistic people who kidnap children, turn them into child soldiers. Yes, they did that. But initially, that's not how they started off. Yeah, yeah. They were real grievances with the government in Freetown. I mean, yeah. at the time, Sierra Leone was basically, the government of Sierra Leone was the government of Freetown. Mm. The rest of the country as, might as well have not existed. So the people who lived in the countryside, they had a reason to feel like these out-of-touch people in Freetown are, you know, stepping on the rest of us. It's like we don't exist, you know. There's no government presence. It's something as simple as basic as roads, mm. you understand? Formal education, nothing. It's like we live in the 16th century here. Meanwhile, Freetown is a reasonably modern city, you understand? They have mm. everything you'd expect to see in a modern city. So you know, the grievances were real. But because of that failure to articulate yeah. what the roadmap is from A to B, so this is where I am right now, this is what I'm unhappy with, mm. and this is where I want to be. How do I get from here to there? That failure to articulate what that roadmap was is what led to people, it now ended up turning into long sleeve or short sleeve. Mm. That, that kind of nonsense, you mm -hmm. know, forcing seven-year-olds to shoot their parents dead, all that kind yeah. of shit. That's what happens when there's no roadmap. And that's what I see happening today, unfortunately, in parts of the Southeast, because I, the, the likes of um, Nam De Kandu, um, that potato head guy, what's his name? Simon Nekpa. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Those guys, um, those guys are not geniuses or something. There's, there's nothing yeah. extraordinary about They wrote the wave, yeah, simple. There's nothing extraordinary yeah, about them. What, all they did was that they weaponized an yeah, existing grievance. Yeah, a yeah, real grievance. Yeah, yeah, true. It's an actual grievance because, yeah. which is, you know, whether or not Nigeria said there was no Victor no vanquished, there was a victor, there was a vanquished. Of course, yeah. The civil war. Yeah. Like, and there was a victor and vanquished to the point where Nigeria even vanquished itself, trying mm -hmm. to prove how much of, if, of a victor it was. So, for yeah. example... The steel, you know, Nigeria still doesn't produce um, industrial quality steel, mm. even yeah, though there yeah. was supposedly the world's largest steel mill yeah, was constructed state, yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, what most people don't know is that the consultants who who designed that steel mill yeah. recommended that that steel mill should be sited just outside Onitsha, mm. but as a direct result of the, the Biafran the war, yeah. Yeah. The, no, as a direct result of the Biafran war, it mm. was a stated policy of Murtala Mohammed that you should not reward those Igbos. Wow. So he now moved it to a forest in Kogi State instead. In fact, the Metallurgy Institute of Nigeria, which was already constructed prior to the steel mill, till today it's in Onitsha. Mm. That's why. Because that was constructed first. The steel mill was supposed to be next to the Metallurgy yeah. Institute. Yeah. That's why Metallurgy Institute is in Onitsha. Steel mill is in Kogi. You know? 
But Nigeria ended up dribbling itself because yeah. we went and put it in Kogi where it's unviable. Exactly. It has never produced anything exactly. in 40 yeah, plus yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. True, true. Right. So there was a Victor, there was a vanquished. Yeah, yeah. Victor and vanquished to the point where the entirety of the, the, the Niger River, or the southeastern part of the Niger River, has only been over 60 years now, has only two bridges over it. And that second bridge was used as a political... Yeah. From Jonathan to you Buhari understand? To, yeah, yeah. And then Buhari went and named it Muhammad Buhari Bridge, which was the ultimate insult. insult yeah. It's an insult, yeah. You know? So, yeah, there are real grievances. Yeah. I mean, I could go on and on. The Southeast doesn't have a single meter of, um, uh, what's it called, standard gauge rail. Mm. When money was being wasted on constructing railways from Kad Abuja to Kaduna, on viable routes, you know, Kano to Maradi, about to Port Harcourt, which after Lagos to Ibadan should be the most profitable rail route yeah, yeah, in Nigeria, yeah. um, what was allocated to it was, oh, they should refurbish the existing narrow gauge railway, when the rest of the world doesn't use narrow gauge railway yeah. anymore. And what that does is that, first of all, it means that, because narrow gauge rail and standard gauge rail don't interoperate. Yeah. So it means that you, basically the southeast and southwest will remain economically disconnected because they can't connect their rail systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it means that it's more expensive to maintain the southeastern rails because... Nobody uses narrow gauge rails course, anymore, yeah, except course. India and yeah, South Africa. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, there are real grievances. Mm. I can't stress that enough. There are real grievances, and there are reasons why people like Namdi Kano could exist. Mm, mm. But now that they exist, what roadmap have they proposed? I don't see any roadmap that they proposed. True. I see a lot of, I see a lot of vexation. Mm. I see a lot of anger. I see a lot of aggro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what is the root from yeah. A to B? I'm not even saying, oh, you have to be polite. You have to be civil. That's not what I'm saying at all. You can be yeah. rude all you want. But the truth is, is there a walkable route from A to B? Yeah. Have I seen it? I have not seen it. I agree, of course. So that's my yeah. issue yeah. with the modern day iteration of the Biafra idea. Mm. I have no problem with the idea of, of a Biafra if, 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 it was, um, if it was communicated in a way that made it make sense. Yeah. So if... Anybody who is um, advocating for a Biafra, who is pushing mm. for a Biafra, if they can explain to me, for example, how, and these are real issues, for example, and I'm not saying this is why Biafra shouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, explain to me how, for example, the two ethnic groups in West Africa that have the highest rate of intermarriage, that's the Yoruba and the Igbos. If you go, if you want to put a, an international border between them, how do you want to fix that issue? Yeah. Real, real yeah. issues. The two ethnic groups that have the highest um, economic interdependence in West yeah. Africa, the Yoruba and the Igbos. If you put an international boundary be between them, how do you want to fix yeah. that issue? Yeah. You understand? They are, these are Nitty real gritties. issues Nitty gritties. that you can't fix with rhetoric. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's exactly. easy to shout. Exactly. But Nitty how do you want to fix these real yeah. issues? Nitty gritties. These, these are the issues. Yeah. Absent, not in mute. They're not saying anything. I agree. What, what I'm going to add is that I think as well, to add to what, which I agree with, is that I think we in Debo, because I'm an Igbo person as well, we have to look in the mirror. We've also not, not done ourselves any good as well. We've elected nonchalant, incompetent governors in the Southeast. Look at Abia State since 1999. Abia State is one of the worst states in the Southeast. Whether it's Ibazo, sorry, Ojo Zokalo initially, the second one, and then Ibazo, and then hopefully, hopefully, he resolves it. But Abia, in the Abia, they've not done themselves any good by electing PDP for the past 24 years. Look at um, Imo State under this current guy. Yes, he came in through the Supreme Court. But he's going for re election. Hopefully, I hope he doesn't win because he's secreting Imo. Very, very poor. He doesn't live in Imo. He, he lives in Abuja. In Abuja. Yeah, exactly. His wife is always in Abuja. So look at um, Abakliki. The current governor is naming the airport after Buhari. So we are not even Buhari saying we are going to name it like that, 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 that bridge. This is the governor of the state of Mai saying you're going to name the airport after Buhari. This is an evil person. So, you're, so you have to, at some point, we will have to be like, look in the mirror and be accountable to ourselves. And before we start pointing to the federal government, let us solve, let us do the best that we can as a state, as a region, first of all. So Ludo should try to get a grip on this insecurity in Anambra state. Get a grip on it because it's not good for Anambra. Emo, any good state was a bit okay under Sullivan Sheme, under Buruburu. It went sideways. But my point is, as in Dibu, on our own, we should be able to solve some issues. Then we can answer to the federal government, okay, this is where you guys can come in and help us here and there. But 
I mean, my brother, we can go on and on. I hope that people read your book and these other stories of Flutter Wave. We can talk about it next time on, mm-hmm. on the Ini story. Powerful stories, bro, honestly. But hopefully, we can get to do this some other time again. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you so much. Bro. No worries, it. bro. Thank you, bro.